Today we're going to talk about the movie Midnight Special, directed by Jeff Nichols, who also did Take Shelter, which is fantastic, which I'm going to talk about at a later point, and Mud as well, which is great. But now, let's get to Midnight Special. There's a very specific scene with two actors I want to talk about that is kind of a mix between acting choices, moments that you can change depending if you have a very specific audio file that you're animating to, and specific character traits and behavior based on environment, the character's awareness of his or her surroundings. So let's start the sequence. So they are going through this destruction field and the first thing I want to point out is this moment here when he gives him that look, it cracks me up every time. So he asks him a question, let's go back here. He asks him a question and he responds with well, go ask an engineer. The reason why I'm pointing this out is because this is a moment, his reaction here, that happens outside of the audio. So if you are animating to lip sync, you're going to be tied to his delivery, his question. Um, you can potentially change the environment, you know, kind of where they are. You have some sort of freedom given that audio file, but you're still kind of bound to that rhythm, to obviously the lip sync and kind of what they're saying. So it's kind of up to you to be as creative as you can within those limitations. But what I love about audio files, and this is going to be a whole potential FNA or future subject about picking the right audio file. What I like is silence pauses between sentences. Why? Because this is the moment where you can create your own performance. You can deviate from the audio. You can add subtext. You can add a whole new world. The whole new world. Never mind. To your shot. <laughs> this is so stupid. And take control of the acting choices. And in this case, what is neat, if we go back here, he has his response. And for this, just like in here, you could potentially cut to a close up and get into more facial acting, a bit more advanced facial acting, or stay in kind of a medium where you can show more broader body mechanics with facial acting. But he can react like this. Really? You're gonna give me this answer? Really? Or he could laugh, he could smile, he could have a little bit of a f or look at someone else, like, did you hear this? And do a gesture. So, this is your moment where you can take control of this acting choice and do something original that is not bound to the audio file. Continuing on, he tells him, well, something has happened here, but he tells him something and I love this here. So he has his reaction to something that we don't know what it is. He knows and as an audience, we're wondering, well, what is he seeing? Why, why is he reacting like? And this is something that I don't really see that often in student work. It's in movies here and there, but in student work, it's usually very presentational where you want to show your acting choices. You want to show your animation. It's all very clear to the camera. And there are moments where the character can just look and take in information and just react to something where as an audience, you're wondering, well, what's going on? And you're creating some sort of anticipation in the audience where they want to see, well, show us, show us what's happening. So in this case, it cuts to this, which is, you know, a destruction, which again, I don't want to spell too much. It's interestingly framed. We don't really look at anything. So I don't know what they were expecting with potential CG work up there. What I like about this is that you have a reaction in your character and this could be like, whoa, what is this? And it could be some sort of disgust. It could be shock. It could be whatever you want. And again, this is something where you're in control of the acting choices and it's outside of the audio elements or the lip sync or the timing. So this is all you. And then in this, you can technically sneak in an exercise. So my thing is always, you want to take exercises and kind of mask them as just shots. Shots as if you are taking them out of a movie, just out of a sequence, it's a standalone thing, but it's not an, an assignment where it's a box lift, right? Or a specific gear change where you always kind of know that that is an assignment. So in this case, you could sneak something in. And what if the whole background thing is about destruction, something landed, something broke, you could have something broken in here, a crater or something, and something is sticking out, it could be a meteor, it could be something, right? whatever object. And then you got your characters in my fantastic drawings here. They're trying to pull this out, one person is pushing, and now suddenly this becomes your weight assignment. Now, it makes sense within the story where someone says, well, this happened and this is some sort of destruction here, and he is reacting to this, and we're wondering what's going on, and now you're showing what this character has talked about, and you're showing why this character is reacting, the other character is reacting to this destruction, whatever it is you want to show, but you sneak in potentially a weight assignment. What I like about this part too is the relationship between these two. He doesn't seem to really like him. He doesn't really care how he gives him 
these documents, he doesn't look at him. Like I always a big fan of eye line, eye contact, how long do you look into someone's eyes and you look away or you don't look into someone's eyes at all. And in this case, he just kind of hands those documents back there, come on, take them. And then he kind of checks like, really, come on. And he has to hurry. If you look at him, let's go back here. And he goes, oh, oh and let me, let me see this. That tells us something about their relationship. It's an interesting moment where you can have contrast in movement where he's doing his walk and you can put in a walk cycle with some changes. And he looks around, he goes, oh, it has to go forward. That to me is an interesting change in the character. It could be a fun thing to animate. And I like just that. <laughs> Again, his expression, he cracks me up. Then we get to this moment, which is probably one of my favorite moments here. Bam. And you're wondering why? <laughs> why am I pointing this out? The awesome thing here is that if you look at Driver's performance here, he is completely fascinated by this, is concentrating on this, he's mesmerized, whatever you want to read into this, but he's de definitely focusing on that part and he's completely unaware of what's in front of him because he's not looking in front of him. And the thing is, he's acting this out because he's seeing this for the first time. He turns around and if you look at him, whoa, time. he has that moment of, whoa, I almost walked into you. Now this could be their first take. He had no idea. They rehearsed this. That's what he wants to do. Weird, that's a weird smiley something face. Anyway, but it's a moment where to me, it shows spatial awareness or the lack of spatial awareness, and by spatial I mean what's around him, what are the characters around him, what they are doing in the scene. So that is just a cool moment that just feels unrehearsed, and it's not so planned out, where a lot of times in, in animation, again, not saying movies, not generalizing, but like certain acting choices in for student work is sometimes a bit too simple. Not that you want to throw in a lot of complex stuff just to make it too complicated, just to be complicated. But I think this is a really cool moment, this is the last just that where he has that slight little, whoa, I'm too close, slight reaction there, slight change there, and then they continue and the scene ends. So it's a little thing, but it could be a really fun thing to animate. It's something else that, to me, grounds this character into this environment, Is that so, if that's a way to explain it. But you wanna get out of this idea of having a character in a scene on an empty background or just like a bland background and the character is kind of performing somewhat to the camera, not looking into the camera, but kind of performing like this with a lot of hand gestures, which is kind of the cliche student acting work. I'm a big fan of putting the character into an environment and having the character be influenced by that environment. And that could be temperature, it could be how they have to walk because of what the environment is made of, or the character is looking at the environment. But at the same time, the same with characters, the characters being surrounded by other characters, or another character does something and they react to their acting choice or a sound, whatever it is. And that is going to be part of another lecture of having the environment affect the character. That's a whole different subject I want to get into because that's really important to me. But in this scene, it's just a really neat little detail. And again, he waits for him. He turns and he waits and he waits. And, um, and also he doesn't care. He doesn't care that he's about to bump into him. Again, it kind of shows their relationship. It's just a small little detail that just kind of in that scene, that's really neat to me. There's a lot more in this movie. There are actually a couple more scenes I want to get into, but they're part of a different subject, like secondary reaction and close-up detail, but that's for another time. But just for that sequence, I think there's some really, really cool stuff with Again, their relationship, little moments where you can take control of the acting, you're not bound to the audio. There are moments where you can create anticipation in the audience where they're wondering what is going on. And then you can have a payoff where you can do whatever you want with that scene. And again, you can take control of the acting choices that are maybe different than what you would expect when you listen to the audio by itself. And then you have a moment like this here, where again, just by how they're handing their document, how they're doing a certain gesture, or handing off props or whatever it is that you want to do in your scene. Think about when you have two characters, how they relate, what their relationship is in terms of do they know each other for how long, do they like each other or not? And then having the characters be aware of their environment. So in his case, he is completely focused on this. And then for a moment, just has this little, whoa, I'm too close to this. So little details that to me, they, they ground the characters in their reality. They, they perform in character. It all makes sense within that world. And I think it's an extra detail that could be really interesting to see in your performances. So when you do your shot and you act it out and you shoot reference or you have some, a friend of yours uh, do reference or you film them, think about those choices. Think about who are they? Who are those characters? What are they doing? Where are they? How is the environment gonna affect them? 
And I'm going to talk about that later on in length. That's a whole separate long topic I want to get into with more examples, but that's going to be another clip. If you want to get notified by all the daily updates, I highly recommend that you subscribe and hit that bell button so you get all the notifications. And thank you for watching until the very end and see you next time.